Hello everyone, welcome. In this presentation, I will explain the paper Tackling Degenerative Learning Trilemma with Denoising Diffusion GANs. Let's get started. First of all, what are they talking about? What is Genetic Learning Trilemma? Well, in general, we want three different qualities from a genetic model. First, obviously, we want high quality samples. Next, we want fast sampling because nobody likes waiting. Finally, we want diversity in the generated samples. This is also called mod coverage. Now let's see whether popular genetic learning models can satisfy these criteria. First, we have variational autoencoders and normalizing flows. Among the genetic models, these are the simpler ones. Therefore, they offer fast sampling capabilities. They also have a decent mod coverage. But unfortunately, the samples taken from these models usually lack quality. Next, we have genetic adversarial networks, or shortly GANs. The sample quality of GANs are impressive. Despite this, they still have fast sampling, because sampling means just one forward pass of the generator. However, the GANs are infamous for their mode collapse issues meaning that they cannot deliver the sample diversity we desire. Finally, we have denoising diffusion models. These models can also generate high-quality samples, and unlike GANs, they don't have serious mod collapse issues. But the weakest point of diffusion models is their sampling speed. Because in order to generate a single sample, you have to go through this long diffusion process step by step. So we have seen several different models, none of which can offer all three qualities we want. The authors call this issue the genetic learning trilemma. It seems like we don't have a model that can do all of these. The method proposed in this paper is called denoising diffusion GANs. The authors argue that this method effectively solves the genetic learning trilemma, offering all three features at once. Now, let's go over the diffusion models because it's at the heart of this proposed method. First, we have a forward diffusion process that adds noise step by step. At each step, we add noise by sampling from a Gaussian distribution. If we repeat this long enough, eventually the image will become full noise. There are no learnable parameters in the forward diffusion process, it's fixed. The reverse process is where the magic happens. From the given image xt and the current time step t, the network predicts the mean of a Gaussian distribution such that sampling from that distribution removes one step of the noise. Once the model is trained, we can convert any noise into an image by repeating this reverse diffusion process. Unfortunately, this is also the reason why diffusion models are so slow. In order to generate a single sample, we need to go backwards through the diffusion process step by step. But why do we have to go back one step at a time? Why can't we go from the noise to the image at once? Well, that's because we make the assumption that the denoising distribution is a unimodal Gaussian distribution. And this assumption only holds if the step size is sufficiently small. When you increase the step size in order to speed up the sampling, the Gaussian assumption unfortunately fails. In this example, a 1D data distribution is demonstrated through the diffusion process. X0 is the original distribution and X5 is the end of the diffusion process. If you want to revert only one step of the noise, you can saf safely make the Gaussian assumption. Here the denoising distribution is shown in yellow when the step size equals 1. However, if you want to go back multiple steps at once, the Gaussian assumption falls apart. The denoising distribution becomes a multimodal, complex distribution. So what can we do about this problem? Here's the basic idea behind the proposed paper. We want to go fast, therefore we want to go back multiple steps at a time. If the Gaussian assumption fails, so be it. Don't make the Gaussian assumption. Carry out the denoising process using multimodal distributions. Using these complex denoising distributions will allow us to denoise multiple steps at once. In order to achieve this, the authors propose denoising diffusion GANs. They use a full-blown multimodal conditional GAN at each step of the division. 
This makes it possible to denote with complex distributions. In the next section, we will see how the proposed method works in a little bit more detail. At the beginning, we have a regular forward diffusion process that adds noise. X0 is the original image, and we repeatedly add noise until we obtain XT. In the reverse diffusion process, we want to go back to the previous step XT-1. Since we have a GAN architecture, we will have a generator and a discriminator network. We will start with the generator. Given the noisy image x, t, and the time step t, the generator reverses the diffusion process all the way back to the original sample x0. Furthermore, the generator here also takes an L-dimensional latent variable z, which is sampled from the standard normal distribution. This is basically the generator part of the network, and at this point, this is exactly like a regular GAN. It seems like it has nothing to do with diffusion right now. We have generated X0. So how does this generated output tie into the diffusion process? Well, they take the generated output and do exactly what they do in the forward diffusion process. They add noise. When we combine these two steps and treat it like a black box system, it's as if we have reversed one step of the diffusion instead of going all the way back to x0. The authors argue that this is actually a clue to the formulation in the original DDPM paper. Predicting xt-1 from given xt is equivalent to predicting x0 from xt and then adding noise. Here is algorithm 2 from the DDPM paper. In the equation at line 4, Epsilon sub theta predicts the noise that perturbs x0 to xt. This is basically equivalent to predicting x0 directly. For more information about this, you can see Appendix B in the paper. So, going back to the pipeline, this formulation is actually the same as the formulation in the original DDPM paper. The main difference is that in DDPM, x0, or rather the noise that perturbs x0 to xt, is predicted as a deterministic mapping of xt, whereas in this case, x0 is produced by the generator with random latent variable z. And finally, since this is a GAN architecture, we have a discriminator network that predicts whether the given xt-1 is real or fake. It outputs the probability that the given sample comes from the real forward diffusion process. The discriminator also takes the noisy image xt and the time step t. Now, in order to train this network, we need a loss function. Discriminator loss is the same as in traditional GANs. The discriminator tries to maximize the probability of labeling the true samples as real and the generated samples as fake. In this formula, we minimize the negative log likelihood, which is essentially the same thing as maximizing the probability. In the paper, they use a non-saturating GAN, which is also used in style GAN. This means that in the generator, instead of minimizing the inverted discriminator probability, we maximize the discriminator probability directly. In this formula, xt is from the diffusion process, xt-1 is produced by the generator based on xt, and the inner term is the log of the discriminator probability based on these values. All in all, we ended up with a framework that integrates GAN into the diffusion process. But what is the advantage of this over the regular GAN? Because GANs can generate samples in one shot. Why should we prefer this over GANs? Well, the authors argue that generating complex distributions in one shot is difficult. This might be the reason why we faced issues with training stability and mod coverage with regular GANs. Diffusion breaks down the generation process into relatively simpler steps. Furthermore, the discriminator is less likely to overfit in this configuration because it operates on noisy images. In the next section, we will go through the experimental results provided in the paper. First, we will inspect the results on a toy dataset called 25 Gaussians. As the name implies, this dataset consists of 25 Gaussian distributions aligned in a 5x5 grid. GANs unfortunately perform bad on this dataset. 
Granola Gang exhibits severe mold collapse issues, although these issues elevated by Wasserstein Gang it still has poor sample quality. Diffusion models produce great samples, but they need many denoising steps to be effective. Even 100 steps is not enough. You begin to see good results at 500 steps. This makes diffusion models remarkably slow. And this is the proposed method. Only after 4 steps of denoising, the results are already competitive with 500 steps of regular diffusion. Also, it doesn't exhibit the mode collapse issue that plagues the GAN models. By using denoising diffusion GANs, we get the best of the both worlds. We can generate high quality samples with lots of diversity and we can generate them fast. According to this, denoising diffusion GANs introduced in this paper can really solve the generative learning trilemma. Now, let's see how this model performs on an actual dataset. Here you can see some samples from the proposed model trained on C410 dataset in their 32 pixel glory. Most of the samples are good. There are some weird ones in there if you look closely, but that's probably the best quality you can expect from this dataset. Also, the samples are quite diverse. You can see cars, planes, ships, dogs, cats, birds, and so on. Here they compare the sample quality and sampling time of different diffusion models on C410 dataset. X axis is the sampling time and Y axis represents the FID score. Lower is better on both dimensions. Here we see that the proposed method is the fastest among the diffusion models by a large margin. Also please note that the X axis is in log scale. This means that other diffusion models are exponentially slower than the proposed method. Despite its significantly increased speed, the proposed method still offers competitive sample quality. When compared to GAN models, style GAN is still faster than denoising diffusion GAN. Also, the sample quality of style GAN seems to be slightly better. This might make it seem like denoising diffusion GAN is inferior to style GAN, but the sample diversity of style GAN is much more limited. For more information about this, you can see Table 1 from the paper. I won't go into the details here since it's too long for this presentation. Here are some samples from the Denoising Diffusion GAN on high resolution datasets. The results are almost indistinguishable from real photos. In this figure, we see what the generator generates at different time steps of the diffusion process. In the top row, we see XT for different steps of the diffusion, and X0 is an original image from the dataset. There are three samples from the generator for each XT. Naturally, when we denoise X1, the results are pretty close to the grand truth. As we increase T, we see that the sample diversity increases since more noise is added to the image. But the sample quality also degrades since more denoising steps are required. To clear things up, these samples at the right are not the final samples. We need to add three steps of noise to them and run the generator again. Then we need to add two steps of noise and so on. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for watching. You can see the references on this page.